Let's do an example. Uh, this is this is these are uh, from this is from a selection uh, of output that's uh, at the back or sort of it's sort of in the middle of the slides for multiple linear regression, but it, it's uh, at can, can be considered towards the end of our discussion so far before we move into another uh, phase of multiple linear regression. Uh, and normally, you know, we would get together in, in groups, and uh, each group would get a, a set of data, and would ask, and I, and, you know, would answer the fundamental seven questions uh, that we we saw in the previous segment. Okay, let's let's just do this for show time, and uh, we'll just kind of go through the the data and what we see and what the results are and the interpretations, and do that discussion as if we were answering those fundamental questions. So, so in no particular order, I, I, just, I find it's just easier to go from the top of the, the output to, towards the bottom, just so that we don't miss anything, right? That's the thing. There's no rigid order. Uh, but when you go to do your presentations uh, of your results later on, you may want to sort of keep this in mind so that you can maintain a conversational tone, but yet cover all the topics. So let's start at the top. And we see an adjusted R squared of 0.88664984, lots of digits there, decimal spots. And so roughly 89% of the variation in weekly gross revenue, which is our Y here, so roughly 89% of the variation in gross revenue is explained by this model. That's pretty good, right? Standard error of the estimate, so uh, the, the model is in thousands of dollars. So when we think of it, that's about standard error, 642 bucks, 643 bucks. So if we make an estimate, right, we'd expect uh, the actual number to fall plus or minus 642 bucks, uh, roughly 68% of the time, uh, and then maybe about 95% uh, of the time, uh, the actual observation will be within about 1300 bucks of our our estimate okay we continue on uh, and let's uh, conduct a, a, an f test let's uh, uh, you know let's let's uh, test for the significance of the overall model and overall model we see the keywords overall model in there and we assume some alpha of, let's say, 0 0.01, okay? So we have that, and the keyword is overall model, which tell, tells us that uh, uh, it's an F-test. So our step one in this particular F-test is our a, we got HO and our HA, stating our HO and our HA. We have two slopes, one slope for uh, television advertising, and one for newspaper advertising. So we have beta one equals to beta two, and that they're both equal to zero. And that means the model is not significant. Or at least one of those betas doesn't equal to zero. And we have to specify those subscripts, right? If we're going to say at least one beta i doesn't equal to zero, we've got to say i is equal to one, i is equal to two, right? Step two is we have an alpha of 0 0.01. Step three. We're testing for overall model significance, so we know F-test is what we're all about. It's like the hokey pokey. It's what it's all about. And so we have an F-test of 28.38, let's say, uh, with the degrees of freedom of 2 and 5. Okay, so not a big sample size with this. So when we uh, look at our results and we think about those results, we have to keep at the back of our minds. It's not a big sample size. So... A little bit of warning there. Step four, we have a p-value of 0 0.00187. I'm going to round it a little bit. It's really, really small, so it doesn't much matter. Step five, p-value is less than any reasonable alpha. and certainly less than the 0 0.01 we've selected for this particular question. And therefore, we can uh, reject h naught with that particular alpha. And our conclusion, which I won't torture you with my handwriting by writing, I'll just state it. We can conclude that the model is significant. 
Or alternatively, we can say we can conclude that at least one of the slopes is not equal to zero. Either one is fine. It's kind of going to have a little bit of a statsy flair, flavor to it no matter what we do. So uh, either, either version is okay. Now we can test a specific coefficient, right? So we can test if there is a significant relationship between newspaper advertising, right? So we want to look at just newspaper advertising. How's that working out for us? So just newspaper advertising and weekly gross revenue. Okay, so specifically single named coefficient there, screaming at us t-test, 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 t, 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 it's tea time. Okay, so step one, H-O, step two, H-A, because we saw the keyword test, and newspaper advertising, that is the second beta, so that's beta two equals to zero versus beta two doesn't equal to zero. Um, let's keep with the same alpha. So we'll assume alpha is equal to 0 0.01. So step two, alpha is level of significance, 0 0.01. Step three, we have our T stat, which we look across our row, and we see is 4.0. Let's round it and say six, with the degrees of freedom equal to N minus P minus one, or in this case, five. Same as the degrees of freedom for the residual or for the error. Step four, we look in that same row. We found the T stat, and we see a P value of 0 0.00976. And step five, P is less than or equal to the alpha. Therefore, we dot, dot, dot fill in the blanks there, we can conclude then that dot, dot, dot from that particular uh, decision. Okay, so very, very important that if you don't know what happened at the dot, dot, dot part, go review the simple linear regression notes and, and, and uh, look at the hypothesis testing steps in, in chapter 9 or in the, in the slides for hypothesis testing and so on, okay? Now, let's look at some of our uh, interpretations of these slopes. Let's look at the interpretation for the intercept. Okay, so we can interpret the intercept. First of all, we start off, uh, the intercept means that the both x variables have to equal to zero, and if both x variables equal to zero, this is what we would expect weekly gross revenue to be equal to. So we look at that intercept and we see a, a value of 83.23. And we consider, okay, that's 83,000 bucks. Could the weekly gross revenue for a movie theater be $83,000? Eh, you know, assuming you're not closed by COVID. Sure, right? Sure. Okay, so that's a possible value. It's not like negative or something goofy. Now, could the two X variables be equal to zero? So could you have a week where you don't run any TV ads? Sure. Could you have a week where you don't run any newspaper ads? Sure, right? Not obligated to run these things. You know, you could potentially have it. So in this case, um, uh, the intercept does have practical meaning. So if we were to run no TV or newspaper ads, we expect, right, it's like saying average, expect weekly revenues to be 83,230 dollars, let's say. And that's it. It has practical meaning, right? So don't run any advertising. 
moving revenues will be $83,000. Now, what happens if um, we were to run, so let's look at TV ads. We were to run one more TV ad, okay? So we run one more TV ad. And that's just, that's just another way of saying that uh, TV goes up by one unit. Then we would expect $2,290 more revenue on average. Expect, I guess I don't need to use the word average. So, okay, so we'd expect $2,290 more revenue, right? That's just the value of the coefficient. Same thing as if we were to run one newspaper ad. Then we would expect about $1,300 more revenue in weekly revenue. And then we can compare you know, each with uh, how much would a TV ad cost, how much would a newspaper ad cost, and then make the appropriate decisions. So there's our interpretation of our coefficients. So very big league interpretations going on in this particular regard. Let's look at our normal probability plot. A little bit wavy. I think the small sample size is probably driving that. It's probably straight enough, but um, you know, it's 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 not it's not great, and it's kind of driven a little bit by the the very very small sample size. So that is a concern point. What what now we can start to think of well, what what's missing in this model, right? Um, and uh, I, I leave that up to you and your business judgment, right? Television advertising has a very small p-value, so it looks like it's significant as well. So it appears that both independent variables are significant. Right? We did the test, the formal test for newspaper advertising, but we can take a little peek at the uh, p-value for TV advertising and see that's a small p-value, suggesting that the slope for television advertising is significantly different than zero. Both slopes are positive, so running more ads leads to more revenue. However, we don't know the cost of each one of those respective ad runs. Okay, So we just keep that in our mind. And that is essentially sums up a, a lot of the, the basic questions that we, uh, that we run through, right? Got the practical meaning, got the meanings for the coefficients, explained the, project the predictors, overall model, R squared, you know, pretty good, but you know, you know, we don't have to when I expect when I get you to do interpretation, although I'm not expecting you to to note that some nervousness about the sample size, I will note some nervousness about the sample size. Uh, we could also make a prediction, right? and that's not something we haven't done uh, yet. So let's do a, let's do a prediction. It's not in one of the questions, but it should have been. So let's make a prediction. If we ran, if we run two TV ads and three newspaper ads, and it could be any combination of stuff, nothing magical about those two numbers. What would we expect? You could also use the word average too, okay? So expect weekly revenues to be. Okay, so in that case, we would uh, we would uh, be looking at that uh, revenue hat, and that would equal to the eighty three point two three. And well, now we just plug in the numbers, plus two point two nine. That's the TV ads times by two for the number of TV ads we run, plus three times one point three. Remember, these are in thousands of dollars, so we can keep all this is in thousands of dollars. When we when we actually get the result at the very end, we will relate it in thousands of dollars because that just makes more sense and it's easier to discuss and it's easier for other people to understand. So we punch all that through the calculator. We get uh, expected revenues of uh, expected revenue ninety one point seven one or equal to uh, ninety one thousand seven hundred and ten dollars. Okay, so we can we can do some some running. We also know that uh, sixty eight percent of the time we expect the actual weekly revenues to be uh, within six hundred and forty three dollars of that estimate, and about ninety five percent of the time we expect the 
weekly revenues to be within 1300 ish dollars of that particular amount okay given given the results we have so far okay. and that, that that's basically there's a run through of our, our standard example now I encourage you to do it for the other examples and now in the next segment we'll leap into well what happens you know right now so far at this point we've only talked about quantitative variables as our independent variables what if we have qualitative what if we have categorical variables that we want to bring into our regression equation because they do help explain things uh, how do we do that and the major way we do that is through the use of dummy variables which is coming up next